Hey there, I am Ari from Tech Buyers Group, and I've got a very special review for you here on the channel today. This is the long-awaited Sliger SV590, a small form factor case from Sliger, a company based in Nevada. This follows in the footsteps of a lot of cases that were started on Kickstarter, but Sliger is no kickstarted company. It's been around for over 35 years as a metal manufacturing company, recently getting into the PC chassis business. And there are signs already just looking at it that this is no standard ITX chassis. This is no standard computer case. This really appeals to a different type of market from the other cases I have here. And mostly I have these here for scale. I have the SG13 from Silverstone, which is one of my favorite ITX cases. And I have the LDO3 over here, also from Silverstone, which is more of a match in terms of size to the SV590. But even still, the SV590 is truly in a different class. And it all starts with price. This comes in at $279, which is a lot for an ITX chassis. You also have to consider that it doesn't have the special features that a lot of other modern cases have, like RGB lighting, tempered glass, any included fans, USB ports, none of these. Slider is delivering something completely different from the mass market companies out there, like Silverstone, like Cooler Master, like Fantex, and the rest. The claim to fame here at $279 is not a bunch of included features, but rather the ability to house both a 240 millimeter cooler and a 120 millimeter cooler, or alternatively a 360 millimeter liquid radiator cooler, which is unprecedented in a chassis like this under 20 liters. You also get it in a number of finishes. This is the black finish. You can also get it in gunmetal or what they call a rust patina. If you're looking for a standard chassis, well, you already know that this is not the one for you because heck, it's $279. And frankly, you can only buy direct from Sliger. You won't find it at any retail outlet. And I'm just gonna tell you just another thing that's another sign that this is really in a different category altogether is it comes with only a couple of things in the box. Some rubber feet, a power extension cable, a few bags of screws, and then a cover for a PCI slot if you're not going to use it, and then the, the mounting bracket for your, your power adapter here. What it doesn't come with is a manual. That's a sign that this is really for someone who is a little bit more experienced in the PC building market, who's probably worked not only with computers before, but with ITX machines, small form factor systems. There's a lot of stuff going on in here that isn't for the faint of heart, all right? You're gonna have to have some familiarity with building PCs before you jump into a chassis like this. But assuming you're prepared for the experience, this is something that you will not find from any other mass market company. And I think more importantly, although there are a lot of boutique vendors out there making cases like this, they're not made in the United States. So if you're interested in a truly unique small form factor PC experience, join me on this ride as I discover what the SV590 has to offer and why it just may be the perfect small form factor chassis. I'll be back in a minute. All right, I have begun the build and the first thing I realized was that I had to remove this drive tray in order to install the power supply. Okay, so this was pre-installed from the factory which is nice except for the fact that I actually couldn't use it there. So you have to take that out. That required removing a couple of screws. So I'll set that aside for now and then I'm able to drop my SFX power supply into place. This is a Silverstone model, the 650 G. So this is an SFX power supply and that is what Sliger recommends due to the size constraints here. So here we go. We've got the fan towards the exterior. I drop it into place. The next step is actually to get screws in here. Now, my standard screwdriver barely, just barely fits through these vents, although I'm going to have to work at an angle. My power supply came with screws, so I'm going to go ahead and use those. The main obstacle here is that I'm really working at an angle. Now for the fourth screw, I just don't have the angle to get it in. Luckily, SFX power supplies have multiple 
screw holes. So I'm just going to use a different one here. Next step, I've actually checked things out and remember I need to fit all my radiators in here. I've got two radiators and I found that it's essentially a puzzle that only has one solution. You have to get this all in order. So my 240 millimeter CPU radiator needs to go in first. I need to snake through the cooling block. And again, there's kind of only one way for this to go in. This is sort of where the rubber meets the road. So you can see specs that say, oh yeah, it, it allows you to use 360 millimeter radiators or dual radiators, but it doesn't mean that it's actually that easy to do. So I have to kind of get my hoses in at an angle. They're a little bit wedged here in, on the steel frame. I think it'll work. So I'm going to go ahead and screw this radiator in at the highest position that it will accept so that I have space for my lower radiator here. I'll be back in a second. Now my video card radiator is going to go down here. Again, it's going to be a pretty tight fit. I'm going to go ahead and install it now just to make sure that I have space for it. All right, my radiator's in. Let's take a look at where that graphics card goes. So this is the riser cable that the case comes pre-installed with. And here's my riser card. Okay, I've got just enough space for my video card to reach. You know, there's really no other way for me to mount these radiators. So you can fit a 240 and a 120, but you may be unlucky and find that the hoses aren't quite long enough. If I had rotated this radiator 180 degrees, the hoses just wouldn't be able to bend if they'd hit this steel frame. So I had to go this way. It's a little bit tighter than I would like, but it's the only way that it will work. All right, next up, I'm going to install the motherboard. I've already tested which screws seem to fit, so I have those ready. I really couldn't tell you which ones they are because they're not labeled, so you're just gonna have to go through the bags and figure it out. So I'm gonna mount this up here. Oddly, I found that some of these screws are Phillips number one, which is not really a standard used in the computer industry. So my number two screwdriver isn't working for these. So it's a little bit frustrating. So just be aware that you may need to have a smaller screwdriver on hand to work with the screws that Sliger gives you. All right, the motherboard is in. Because there aren't a lot of cables coming out of this case, all I've got is the power switch and the power LED, so I'll cable those up now. Next up, I'm just gonna go ahead and install the PCI riser cable, of course, removing the protective cover and then flipping it around. Now these are notoriously delicate, so you wanna be careful when you're moving it that you don't wrench it too much, but here we go. I've got that in. Hopefully, you know, it's, it's at quite a bend. You can see it actually is going to be pushed in by the side of the chassis, and that's really not a good thing. Um, from my point of view, Sliger hasn't provided enough clearance for this cable. And now I will go ahead and install my cooler. Let's see what orientation I can get this in. All right, time to plug in some power supply cables. Luckily, the runs here are gonna be really short. This is my GTX 1080 Ti card. It requires two connections. Of course, it's right next to the power supply, so that is a very short run. Then I got to run some power supply cables up to my motherboard. That's gonna be a little bit more awkward, but I We'll give it a go. I was thinking I might run it back behind the motherboard panel, but I just don't have enough cabling. All right, this thing barely reaches. It's kind of in the way of my motherboard, but my cooler that is, and there's really no other way to do this. That is about as tight as it gets. It's gonna have to pass over my cooler, pass over my RAM, but because there's no tempered glass panel on this case, it doesn't matter that much, but this is not exactly ideal, but it's all I can do. There's no other way to run this unless I got a longer cable. All right, all the cables are in. The big question is, can I actually put the solid state drive mount back in? It's gonna be really, really, really tough. 
All right, I did get it in. I didn't think I'd be able to. That is what I call a tight fit. All right, this cable is completely under tension. It's really not ideal from my point of view, but it's not going to break. It's a big cable. Um, but you can see that that's stretched about as far as it can stretch. All right, I got one solid state drive in. I'll be honest, this rail, this tray is so tight that I, I basically had to shove this in here. And this second secondary slot is basically unusable because there's no there's no clearance for for your connectors to come out the side. So I'm not exactly sure what the point of that is. Maybe maybe you could put it upside down, but those connectors are going to be so tight they'd hit up against the connectors from the other drive. I don't know. I'm not going to mount two SSDs in there anyway. I've got an M.2 drive in my uh, motherboard. So it looks like you could mount a bunch of SSDs here, but due to the constricted space and really insufficient space for cabling, I, I wouldn't count on being able to put much here. It looks good in theory, but um, this was a pretty tight fit. As an exercise, well, it was interesting. I've proved to you that you could fit all this stuff in. Let's go ahead and turn it on. If I only showed you these video clips and not the whole build overview, you'd probably think this system was actually pretty easy to build. Everything seems to just have its place and fit really nicely, but you do know it actually wasn't that easy. Luckily, it looks really cool. Now, one usability issue here is this top panel that's held in by pop rivets. It gives you access to your I.O. panel and your video card ports, but it is a little bit finicky. I wouldn't want to have to do this multiple times per day. The bottom of the chassis has additional venting, and then it has these screws that attach the base. I didn't feel they were quite flush, so definitely use the rubber feet to raise it above any scratchable surface. Another minor fit and finish issue is the bulging you can see here at the side panel, letting some light leak through. This is due to the motherboard power cables really being stretched to their max and pushing that case panel out. A little nip and tuck would probably fix it, but for purposes of this review, I'm just going to leave it as is. This is my favorite view of the SV590, the rear panel with its unique metal lattice work. It looks really cool. But speaking of cool, let's see how cool this case really is by running some benchmarks. Now, at the outset, I should state that I don't have any direct comparisons. Yes, I have two other ITX chassis here in the charts, but the LDO3 was using a 120 millimeter cooler and a slightly older CPU, and the SG13 was air-cooled with a Noctua low-profile cooler and a GTX 1080 rather than the 1080 Ti hybrid that I used in the SV590. But what's really impressive here is just how cool and quiet this system is. Now, moving on to the CPU-Z stress test, focusing on the CPU temp, it's actually quite good. Now the 2700X and the LDO3 tends to run a little bit cooler than the 3600, so I'm not too worried about this result. The GPU result is very, very impressive. Clearly there is no negative impact on GPU temps from the CPU, which is not something I could say with the LDO3. But moving on to my gaming benchmark, which is perhaps the most important because it works both the CPU and GPU, the results are very good, but perhaps not quite perfect. Now, the comparison is not direct here due to the different CPUs, but let's look at the GPU, which actually is the same. It's much, much cooler in the SV590. That's because it really isn't being affected by the CPU heat as it was in the LDO3, which basically forced you to optimize either for CPU or GPU temps. Now, I will say the SV590 is a little bit hotter in terms of the CPU. It's not a direct comparison due to the different generations of CPU, but I do think there's probably slightly constrained airflow in the top of the chassis, and that Sliger could further optimize the airflow by punching out a few more vents up in the upper section of the case. So you've seen the full build overview. You've gotten to know this case inside and out. You've seen the benchmarks. Now I'm going to give you my final verdict. First, the highs and lows. I love the cooling layout of this case and I'm going to be very specific about that. The back panel here with the space for the 360 millimeter radiator or the 240 and 120 like I used is really brilliant. You get a huge amount of cooling potential in an 18 liter chassis which is really mind-blowing. But I don't love the airflow design of this case. I think this aesthetic venting that they did on the side really probably limited the airflow to a certain extent. 
particularly for GPUs. Most people, honestly, are going to use an air-cooled GPU in here, perhaps a triple slot, triple fan model, and they'll work fine because they're really overpowered in terms of their cooling, but it's not going to be because of anything Sliger has done with the layout of this case. You know, ultimately, they designed it around probably, you know, a 360 millimeter CPU cooler, and they let the GPU kind of, you know, fend for itself in this case. And ultimately, this is, was an aesthetic decision. It doesn't particularly appeal to me. Maybe it appeals to others, but it was not an airflow focused vent design. So I'd like to see perhaps another version of this with more airflow. But honestly, the rear mounted radiators, it's brilliant. It really provides a tremendous amount of cooling. Now, there are a few areas in addition to the venting where I think Sliger could have done a better job. First off, this is their premium offering for 2020. They consider it their highest end case, and yet there's no I.O. on this case. I think they're really asking a lot of people to spend $280 on a case and not even have a single USB port, let alone a USB type C. You know, look, I get that these are practically handmade in Nevada. These aren't being mass produced, but when you're spending nearly $300 in a case, you know, most of the cases out there have a lot of USB ports. If, if they, if they're coming in at that price, they're probably going to have audio ports. And I, for one, use those all the time. It's not just a matter of a spec sheet. I am constantly plugging in my microphone, my headset, USB drives, all sorts of things, and my front IO ports. And I can't even easily get to my motherboard ports because of this pop rivet top that it's kind of awkward to get off. And if I had to do that like multiple times per day, I'd get really annoyed. So as a content creator, the style of this case speaks to me, the huge cooling potential speaks to me, but the lack of IO is really, really disappointing, particularly at the price. Now, how about from a gaming perspective? Well, it doesn't have a gaming style, but there are a lot of gamers out there who are probably looking for this more pro look. And, you know, Sliger's giving that to you. I still think the front of the chassis could use a little bit more styling. I mean, that blank monolithic design, eh, it's not that interesting. And, you know, you don't have to flash it up with lights and tempered glass, but hey, something could be on the front of the chassis rather than just the bare metal. And then there's the issue of the very tight tolerances. Look, my power supply cables, my liquid cooled CPU and my liquid cooled GPU all barely made it in this case. My hoses were stretched to the max. My cables were stretched to the max. And I can't guarantee that if you use different brands of coolers and, and GPUs that they'd actually fit. So, you know, Sliger's playing a, a dangerous game here because they're trying to get the smallest chassis that can fit the most cooling. But hey, if my hoses don't reach where they need to go, it doesn't matter if I have a 360 millimeter radiator mount. So I, I, all I can say is good luck. Um, I used a Silverstone cooler, it fit. I used an EVGA hybrid GPU, it fit. I used a Silverstone PSU, it fit, but all just barely. So that's another concern I have that does factor into the score. The usability is right on the edge of kind of, kind of borderline. Um, and then the other issue is it's a hard case to build in if you're going to use it in the way it's intended. First off, you need a CPU uh, liquid cooler. You cannot use air cooling for this. So forget about low profile air cooling. That's just not going to work in this case. It can't even fit AMD's reference Wraith Stealth, which is only 55 millimeters tall. So you're going to have to use liquid cooling, which means you're going to have to fuss with all the hoses and getting them fished through all the nooks and crannies of the case. That means it's going to be a pretty tough build. This was the toughest ITX build I've done. Of course, it's also the only ITX build that has fit this much radiator in it. But the Silverstone LD03, which fits two 120 millimeter radiators, actually was the easiest ITX chassis I'd ever worked with. So it's not necessarily true that you have to make the case difficult to work with if you're going to fit a lot of gear in it. I think Silverst Silverstone has done this for a lot longer, so they've optimized for that. Sliger is new to it. They definitely have a layout that optimizes for size, but not for usability. Okay, so what's my final score? Four out of five. I think it's a really interesting case, but it's expensive and it's really for a niche audience. 
Ultimately, I think the best use case is if you have a very, very high powered CPU that actually requires a 360 millimeter liquid cooler, something like the Ryzen 9 3950X. That would be a good fit for this case. And then a high end triple slot, triple fan, GPU, perhaps a 2080 Ti. And of course you're talking about now very high end gear. And that's probably what Sliger is intending for a case that comes in at nearly $300. But for everybody else, you could probably get by with a smaller case or a cheaper case or both. So there you have it. If you have any questions, please post them down below. I do want to express my very sincere gratitude to Sliger for allowing me to be the lead review on this case. It was a fantastic opportunity. Thank you for that. As always, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru. If you like this video, please do like and subscribe and I will catch you next time.